Thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Story Time! Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment to my page. Here we go. Hi guys, thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time on today. Today I will be reading to you all Disney's Pixar Ratatouille. I love Ratatouille, y'all. When this movie first came out, it was so good. I loved it. Um, and because I love to cook, this is right up my alley. I understand where this mice was coming from, but here's a mice, y'all. But anyways, I'm just getting into the book of the talk. <laughs> all right, guys, here it goes. Deep in the French countryside, a colony of rats sifted through a compost heap for food. It was a dirty job, but Remy had to sniff all the crops of bread, vegetables, and who knows what else to make sure they were safe to eat. His brother, Emile, was always impressed by Remy's sense of taste and smell. Secretly, Remy had a bigger dream than rummaging through trash. He wanted to be a great chef, like his idol, August Gusteau. Remy had even read Gusteau's book, Anyone Can Cook. Both the cookbook and the compost heap belonged to an old woman named Mabel. Mabel's attic was home to the whole rat colony. Although Mabel had no idea the rats lived upstairs, one day as Remy sneaked into her kitchen to look for a spice, he heard Gusteau's name. Remy learned that the great chef had died from a broken heart after his restaurant lost to a five-star rating lost its five-star rating that's why he died wow okay Remy was so shocked by the news about Gusteau that he didn't notice Mabel waking up he and Emil scrambled to escape as Mabel chased them in the chaos the ceiling cracked and the entire rat colony fell to the floor sound the alarm evacuate cried out Remy's father Django as the other rats headed out the door, Remy went back into the kitchen for the cookbook. He couldn't leave it behind. Look, she trying to get them. Look at all them rats, y'all. That's a lot of rats. Wow. When they said colony, they meant it. <laughs> Unfortunately, Remy was left behind. All the other rats made it to the evacuation boats that were floating in the creek. Separated from his family, the little rat tried to use the cookbook as a raft, but was swept away, taking a wild ride down into the sewer pipes. When he finally came to the stop, he was all alone, hungry and sad. Soon after, Remy began to dry out his precious cookbook pages. Magically, Gusto seemed to come to life on the page. Or was it Remy's imagination? If you are hungry, go up and look around, said Gusto. If you focus on what you've left behind, you will never be able to see what lies ahead. Good. That is a good lesson. That is true. And that's exactly what Remy did. He climbed up and up until he saw Paris. Remy said heartlessly, all this time I've been underneath Paris? Wow, it's beautiful. Remy looked to his left. His jaw dropped. He saw the sign for Cousteau's restaurant. Your restaurant? Remy said to Cousteau, you've led me to your restaurant? For Remy, this was a dream come true. Oh, wow. That is a big coincidence, y'all. A surprise. Remy perched atop the restaurant skylight, looking down into the kitchen. At that moment, an awkward-looking young man named Linguini arrived with a letter for Skinner, the ill-tempered chef in charge of the kitchen. Linguini's mother had been a good friend of Gusto's. She wanted her son to have a job at the restaurant. Skinner had no choice. He hired Linguini's as the garbage boy. A little while longer, Linguini accidentally spilled a pot of soup. 
Remy watched in horror as Linguini secretly added water and ingredients to the pot in an attempt to fix the soup. Just then, Remy fell down from the skylight and landed in the busy kitchen crowded with chefs. He scrambled to escape through the open window. Oh man, they about to catch him. Remy ran by the big pot of soup, then stopped short. It smelled horrible. Encouraged by Gusto, Remy thought this was his chance. Remy knew he he could fix the soup. He jumped onto the stove top and started tossing carefully picked ingredients into the pot. <clears throat> Excuse me. As Remy worked, he suddenly realized that a huge face was staring at him. It was Linguini, but Skinner was right behind him. Linguini quickly hid Remy under a colander. Skinner shouted at Linguini, How dare you cook in my kitchen? He fired Linguini at on the spot. Wow. He ain't want to hire you anyway, Linguini. Before anyone knew it, the questionable bowl of soup was on its way to the dining room where an important restaurant critic sat waiting to eat. Everyone in the kitchen was nervous as to what the critic thought about the soup. Word came back, the soup was delicious. The critic loved it. Skinner couldn't believe it, so he tasted the soup himself. It tasted incredible. Um, am I still fired? Asked Linguini. Reluctantly, Skinner gave Linguini a second chance. He assigned Colette, one of the cooks, to teach Linguini. Okay. In the commotion, Remy darted towards the window, but Skinner spotted Remy. After ordering Linguini to catch the rat in a jar, Skinner demanded, Take it away from here! Far away! Dispose of it! Go! Linguini didn't have the heart to throw Remy in the river. Instead, the young man started talking to the little rat. When Remy nodded, Linguini realized that Remy understood him. Linguini, when Linguini made a deal with his new friend. Linguini would let Remy out of the jar if the rat promised to help Linguini cook. Okay, make a deal with a rat to cook. Okay, let's see how that turns out. But as soon as Linguini opened the jar, Remy ran for him for his life. Then he stopped. Remy felt guilty and turned back. He felt bad for Linguini, but he also realized that this could be his big chance to cook in a gourmet kitchen. Back inside the restaurant, Linguini hid Remy in his shirt as Remy tried to help the young chef with his cooking. But Remy kept tickling and biting Linguini to guide him along. Ouch! It didn't work very well. Finally, Linguini hid the rat under his chef's hat. In the bustling kitchen, the pair was about to collide with the waiter so Remy tugged Linguini's hair Linguini jerked backwards like a puppet just ducking under the waiter's tray the young man was amazed could this be their new system Linguini and Remy went home to practice cooking Remy guided Linguini by tugging his hair before long Linguini was chopping mixing and pouring all the while blindfolded oh wow now that is a talent, y'all. That is a talent. Linguini returned to Gusto's and re re recreated the soup easily with Remy's help. Before long, Linguini was doing very well as the new cook. In the meantime, Skinner finally read the letter from Linguini's mother. In it, she said that August, August Gusto was Linguini's father. Nobody knew, not even Linguini or Gusto. Skinner was horrified. He had thought the restaurant would be his. Skinner's lawyer reminded the chef what was in Gusto's will. The will said Skinner would inherit the restaurant, but the on but only if Gusto had no heirs. Now Linguini was the rightful owner. Skinner had to do something to make sure Linguini never found out. Oh wow. So that's his restaurant. Uh oh. I smell scheming in the air, y'all. Trickery.
One night, as Remy was relaxing in the alley behind the restaurant, enjoying a cooking success, Emil appeared. Emil led his long lost brother to the Red Colony's new home. Overjoyed, they held a party in honor of Remy's homecoming. Music and dance filled the sewer. Soon, Remy had to leave. He said that he had a job and a place to live with humans. Remy's father scowled and tried to convince his son that humans were dangerous. He took Remy to an exterminator's shop that specialized in getting rid of rats. Against his father's wishes, Remy headed back to the restaurant. Oh, man. Be careful, Remy. We do like to exterminate y'all for real, though. <laughs> uh, some of y'all, I'ma say. And some of us. <laughs> Meanwhile, at Gusto's, Remy realized that Linguini was so smitten with Coilette that the young man could couldn't keep a secret. Just as Linguini was about to take off his chef's hat to reveal that Remy was the chef behind the cooking, Remy gasped. No, no, whispered Remy as he yanked hard on Linguini's hair. Linguini's jerked forwards and kissed Colette. It was quite a surprise to all of them, but Remy's secret was safe for now. Well, she didn't really fight it, y'all. It looked like she kind of like it. Okay, let's see. Now, long afterwards, Remy found Gusto's will and the letter proving that Linguini was the rightful owner of the restaurant. But Skinner spotted the rat. Remy grabbed the papers and ran. Skinner didn't want those papers to get into the wrong hands. He chased Remy to a boat, but the chef ended up in the river. By the time a walking wet Skinner returned to Gusto's, Linguini knew the truth. Now it was his turn to fight. Skinner on the spot. Be careful what you do to others. You never know how it could turn on you. You may need people in the future. So be careful on how you treat others. Over the next few weeks, the restaurant became extremely popular, but Linguini became arrogant and didn't think he needed Remy's help any longer. One night, the famous critic Anton Ego, the same person who had ruined Gusto's five-star rating, arrived and warned, I will return tomorrow night with high expectations. After Ego's announcement, Colette angrily dragged Linguini's back into the kitchen, trying to get him to concentrate. Remy was also furious at Linguini's car careless behavior and pulled his hair hard. Linguini snapped. He took Remy out to the alley and yelled, you take a break, little chef. I'm not your puppet. Actually, you are. I'm just saying. <laughs> Remy was so angry that he brought the entire red colony to the walk-in refrigerator and told his friends to take what they wanted. That's when Linguini returned to apologize. You're stealing from me? Linguini angrily asked Remy. I thought you were my friend. Get out and don't come back. Remy left the kitchen. The next day, Remy went back because he felt horrible and knew Linguini needed his help. Rat! Shrieked all the chefs when Remy walked through the door. Don't touch him, shouted Linguini. The truth is, I have no talent at all. But this rat, he's the real cook. All of the cooks walked out, even Colette. Only Remy and Linguini were left to cook for Ego. Django stepped out from the shadows. I was wrong about you. About him? Django told um, Remy, referring to how Linguini stood up for the little rat. I'm proud of you. Django whistled and the rats filled the kitchen. We're not cooks, but you tell us what to do and we'll get it done. All the while, the health inspector watched through the door. Oh, wow. Health inspector is seeing rabbits cook, y'all. That's a close down for you, y'all. Just then, Colette returned and agreed to help cook the dish Remy had chosen, ratatouille. After sampling the meal, Ego asked to meet the chef. Linguini introduced Remy without a word. Ego walked out to pen his review.
The next morning, Ego gave the restaurant a glowing critique. Unfortunately, the health inspector also closed Gusto's due to rats. But soon, a new little bistro opened, La Ratatouille, which became famous for its delicious food. Ego was an investor. Linguini was the what was the waiter and Coilette cooked along with Remy. The little rest dream had come true. He was a chef at last. All right. Okay. All right, guys. That is the end of Ratatouille. I hope you all like this book. I like it too. I love the movie too. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Thank you all for tuning in to Big Mama Story Time. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my page if you haven't done so already. And if you have, please don't forget to hit that um that notification bell so that you can get new videos whenever I post my contents. All right, guys. Bye.